Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. Have you shopped for wooden lamps lately? Good ones are hard to find. We know, we've been out there looking. Now next I'm gonna take you to a place where they specialize in antique lamps. And if they don't have exactly what you want, they'll make one for you. That's next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Today we're in Wayland, Massachusetts, a historic community in the metro Boston area. And one of the best kept secrets is this place, the Yankee Craftsman. If you're a Hollywood producer and you're in town shooting a movie, you might come here for just the right prop. If you own a historic house and you have old light fixtures that need to be restored, this is the place to bring them. And if you're missing one, you might find the perfect replacement right here. Now the barn is loaded with treasures and the Sweeney said that I'm free to walk through. Well, on the floor is the latest shipment of goods still being inventoried and cataloged. I wonder where they get all this stuff. Now, if you happen to be looking for the perfect floor lamp, check this out. Cast brass that leads up to these torch shades. And look at above the lamp, an old canoe, 1930. I told you you could find just about anything here. And over here in the corner is a commercial coffee mill probably came out of an old New England country store. And in this room are just some of the lamps that they've restored and now are available for sale. Look at this one, it's beautiful. Leaded crystal shade on a silver plated base. Ah, and over in the corner, a lamp that I think would require a room of its own called Roseville. It's a pottery base with glass flowers and even special little bulbs. Oh, look at this one up here, 1915. So that was right about the time electricity was starting to come into homes. This is an original that's been meticulously restored. And it's what they call reverse paint. It would be great in a country cabin. Now this is just a fraction of the lamps that are available here. And this is an example of what they might do for you. A wooden base that's an antique that's had this leaded shade added to it. Now the shade is not old, it's actually a reproduction, but it looks great. Now if it's shade you're looking for, particularly glass ones, this is the place to be. Now this room is filled with hundreds and hundreds of glass shades. Some of them recovered from gas fixtures and some of them from the early electric fixtures. I've thrown so many of these away over the years and I would never do that again. I guess I didn't know what I had. The shapes are beautiful. The etchings are extraordinary. If you have a project and you're looking for just the right shade or set of shades, this is the place to come. If you look around long enough, you'll find exactly what you want. And the quality of these pieces is so much better than anything you could get today. Now here's something that they do here at the shop. They take a reproduction base and add to it an antique shade. It's just a beautiful piece. It would make a great present, maybe a wedding present. Now one of the fixtures that they're particularly proud of here is this one. It's called a transitional fixture when both gas and electricity were available. The lower lamps were for the electric and if the electric failed, you opened up the valve and fired up the gas lamp. And this is an actual original. Well, I feel right at home here. This is the woodworking shop and you can bring in an antique piece of furniture and have it repaired or restored here and they've brought out the collection of wood bases for me to look at. This one here is pretty interesting, a turning. Looks like it was glued together, two pieces. Nice heavy turning. This one here is a little more complicated. We would have a spindle turning for the top portion and then a face plate turning for the base. There's quite a few good ideas here. I think I'm gonna spend the rest of the afternoon with John Lawrence and the Sweeney Brothers seeing if I can learn a few more of their secrets. Well, that time I spent at the Yankee Craftsman was very useful. And here are some of the lamp bases that I came up with. This happens to be our favorite. It's made out of hard pine, and it came from a recycled timber, so there's no attempt to conceal de defects like this where there was a nail. Now, the thing that's interesting about this piece is the wood itself, a nice tight grain. And because of the turning, you end up with this open grain here, which makes it very unusual. Now over here, a little bit simpler piece, 
a spindle turning similar to one that I saw at the Yankee Craftsman mounted on a faceplate turning for a base made out of mahogany. Now this piece had a lot of promise when I started, made from Port Orford cedar. It had very interesting grain. But as it sat here in the shop over the weekend, all kinds of checks and cracks started to appear. If you look at the base, you can see that the center of the log, which was right here, and as the wood dried, it wants to shrink towards the outside. So you get these radial cracks. And maybe that's why you don't see too many wood lamp bases that are made from a single piece of timber. They're usually glued up in several different pieces. Now let me show you the log that that base came out of. You can see that there are more checks starting to appear. And I'm a little nervous about trying to make another lamp base out of this piece, so I think I'll save it for something else. Now over here is the piece of hard pine that the first lamp base came from. And this was salvaged from a bridge that was dismantled not far from here. You can see that there's a check right here but I think I can get one more base out of this corner, which will have nice tight grain, more of a quarter sawn direction, and that'll make it more stable. Now before we get started, let's talk about safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. And also, of course, hearing protection when necessary. All right, that is a nice piece of wood. Now, if you'd like to build any of these lamps, a measured drawing is available, and you'll hear more about that before the program ends. Now the next thing I want to do with this piece of hard pine is to carve out a six inch square. And the best way to do that is to use my resaw, which is a large band saw with a very wide blade that have carbide tips. Now I'll square up the blank and cut it to length with the radial arm. The next thing I want to do is locate the center of this blank. So I'm using this marking tool, which is for finding centers for turnings. And I like to go on every corner, because if the piece is not perfectly square, this will locate it. Now from the center, I'm going to use a compass or a divider to mark the maximum diameter of the turning. And this will give me a guideline to knock off the corners here so I'll save time at the lathe. Now I'm just going to take a scratch awl and make a pilot hole at each center point. Okay, the next thing I want to do is take my drive center and set that into the wood using a rubber mallet. Now we can slip the drive center into the lathe and then move the cup center over get it set in position. Now the idea here is to get the cup center embedded in the wood about an eighth of an inch and then at low speed we'll check it for balance. Mm, that's not too bad. The first turning tool I want to use is called a gouge. It's a concave shaped chisel and I'll use it to remove enough material to turn the blank into a cylinder. Oh, I wish you could smell the resin in this hard pine. It's wonderful. Okay, that's nice and round. Now we're ready to start doing some layout. So I've made this layout stick with some quarter inch plywood showing the major transitions of the piece. And with it running, we'll just mark each point.
Now I'm going to turn to a parting tool. And at each one of the points where there's two marks very close together, I'm going to turn it down to the correct radius, checking it with my caliper. Okay, that's it for the parting tool. Now I'm going to switch to a skew chisel, and I can make this little V-groove in the base. All right, now I'm going to switch to a half-inch gouge, and I'm going to work on this cove and rounding over the top of the base. Okay, now I want to start working on this portion right here. I'll use a large gouge to remove most of the material and then use smaller gouges to form it. Now the reason I'm taking so much care with this turning is that the pine is so hard and has so much pitch in it that sanding is almost impossible because it clogs the paper. Well now I'm going to start working on this ball and the little bead that's below it and above it. Now we did lose a little piece right here. It's where a nail had passed through the beam. I don't think I'm going to do anything to conceal it. That adds character, as they say. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, now let's get started on the mahogany lamp. I have a square piece of stock, which I'll turn for the spindle. And I have a flat piece of material, which I'll cut for the base. First thing to do is rough it out at the bandsaw. Well, now we're going to do something we haven't done here in the shop before, and that's do a faceplate turning at the lathe. I have to mount this six-inch faceplate on the back of the work. I just sight down to the hole that I use to make the circumference, and attach the piece with some screws. Now the face plate gets attached to a threaded shaft on the outboard side of the headstock. All we have to do is spin it on. Then I can move my tool rest into position. And there's a little bit of difference in turning face plate stock because the grain will change constantly. Here we're up and down to the tool rest, but as we spin around, we're across, and that presents some problems. What I want to do when I remove material is make a shear cut across the face. Now, unlike that pine, this mahogany sands up beautifully. And after I get done sanding this, I think I'll set the spindle up and turn that using the same procedures I used on the hard pine base so that we can put both lamps together tomorrow. Well, I got started this morning by putting the final sanding touches on the spindle that I turned before I left last night. And I think it came out pretty well. Now, if you compare it to the original, there are some slight differences, but every lamp base should be unique in its own way. 
Now that we've completed this one, let's think about building a nice heavy base. Well, because of the problems I had with the turning of Port Orford cedar with all the checking, and this being a softwood, I wondered what would happen if I tried a glue-up made from longleaf hard pine. Now, I looked for the best pieces I could find in my pile, and I found ones with tight grain, with no checks. Then I tried something, which was to turn the growth rings towards the center of the turning, hoping that will minimize checking. I glued them together with the toughest glue I could find and let them sit in the clamps for a couple of days. Now we can clean it up and get ready to turn. A sharp chisel is the easiest way to scrape off any of the excess glue. And whenever you do a turning, the speed of the lathe is very important. The larger the turning, the slower the RPMs of the lathe. Here I'm only at 300 RPMs. All right, well that looks pretty good. A little touch up sanding and that'll take care of it. Well now we're ready to drill some holes and the first hole I want to drill is right in the center of the face plate turning to receive the tenon on the spindle. I'm using a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit and I'll go all the way through. Now I'm going to take the hard pine lamp and put the top in the hole of the drill press table which is aligned with the center of the drill bit. I want to make a one and a quarter inch counter bore about two inches deep. While I've got the same bit in the drill press, I've lowered the table a bit to drill the same counterbore in the large base. The next thing I want to do is drill a 3 8 inch hole through each lamp. That'll receive the electrical cord and this piece of threaded pipe that I've epoxied in place. Well, now I'm going to flip the base over and drill as far as I can from the other side. Now, this is the tricky one. I don't have a lot of leeway to get the hole down through this thin spindle. It's got to be straight. With the lamp spindle clamped in my side vise, I'm switching to my handheld electric drill with a 3 8 inch auger bit. And I'm going to depend on that first hole to continue to guide the bit straight down the center. Now I'll just flip the piece around and drill from the top. Okay, now I've switched to the longest bit that I have. It's a pilot bit. I'm going to start from one hole and hope that we meet up with the other. Sort of like that tunnel under the English Channel. Okay, that's the second one. Now I've switched to a one quarter inch auger bit to drill a hole in from the edge of the base to meet the counter bore so the cord can come out from the side. Now I'm just going to use a square to make sure it's parallel to the bottom and sight by eye to the larger hole. Now to attach the spindle to the faceplate turning, just a little bit of ordinary carpenter's glue. Now each lamp gets a threaded piece of pipe 
onto which all the rest of the lamp assembly is attached. To hold it in place, I'm just going to use some epoxy. It comes in a tube with hardener on one side, resin on the other. You squeeze out equal amounts, mix it up, and apply it. And once this sets for about five or six minutes, you'll never be able to move it. Now, the electrical part of this project couldn't be simpler. I picked up all the parts at my local home center. And the first piece to install is the cord. Run it through the base and then up through the center hole. Now, I found that getting it up through the center can sometimes be difficult. You can't just push the wire up there. It gets hung up. So by using a stiff piece of wire with a little hook bent on the end of it and tying the cord on it makes it easy to pull through. All right, now the next piece is sort of a decorative washer. They come in different sizes, just a little brass washer that'll slip over the pipe. By the way, all these lamp parts are really inexpensive. Here's the harp, which will hold the shade, and they come in different sizes, in half-inch increments, depending on the shade that you use. You feed the wire through that, and that slips on. And the next thing is the bottom of the electrical socket. And that'll actually hold the harp in place. And that just threads on. Now for the socket. The first thing I want to do is make sure that the wires are tightly twisted. It makes it easier to set them onto the screws. Form a little bit of a hook. And I always want to hook the wire over the screw in a clockwise manner. That way, when I tighten down the screw, it'll actually pull the wire tightly in place. Now, it doesn't matter which wire goes on which post. Now, here's a little tip. I'm going to put a stress reliever on the wire. Just bend it in half at the base as close in as possible. Take a little bit of electrical tape and wrap it around the wire. Now, what this will do is prevent the wires from being pulled out of the socket if anyone tugs on the cord. That's good. Now we'll put the bottom on. Now here I have a piece of felt that I picked up at the craft store, and I've cut it a little bit oversized for the base. I'm just spraying on an adhesive, sort of like a contact cement, some on the felt and on the base. Let it sit for about 30 seconds and stick it on. Now I just set the base right on the felt, press it in place. And to trim off the excess, I'm just going to use a sharp utility knife. Okay. Now that is not going to mar any furniture. Now let's think about some finish for these lamps. Now what I'm using for a finish here is an old-fashioned paste wax with a little bit of stain in it, which makes it dark. And what it really does is brings out the beauty of the wood. A few coats and a buffing, and it'll be protected for quite a while. Then we have to do the hardest part of this project, finding the lampshades. You can't build those out of wood. I like that one. Maybe my favorite. Let's try this one. Not bad. And this one, the two-piece mahogany lamp, is just right on this cherry table. These lamps are a good project, and they're fun to build.